What type of monitor system is going to work well for you and your church? In this video, we're going to talk about it. Recently, I sent an email to the Sound Ninjas on my email list and asked, hey, what do you want to know about? And one of the things that came back indicated that there was some confusion about what types of monitor systems are for what and how to set it up. So I thought I'd give a big overview of how different monitoring systems work and the things that you can do and what's going to work well for you and your crew. Hey, if you're new here, my name is James and I help church sound techs, worship leaders, and tech directors eliminate the mystery and frustration around sound at church so that you can have great gatherings that are enjoyable and easy to run. If that's you, you found the right place, go ahead and hit subscribe. The first type of monitoring setup are called side fills. These are speakers that are pointed back at the stage so that everybody on stage, no matter where they are, gets an idea of what's going on with the mix. It typically has a version of the whole mix, even though it might not be identical to the front of house mix. If you've got a lot of amplifiers or a drum kit on stage, these side fills might have to compete with the level of those instruments. So it could be adding a lot to the stage noise, even when the front of house speakers are off, it still might be very loud in the room without all the clarity that you want from having the front of house speakers on. This makes it more challenging to mix front of house, but if you're in a very small environment and those side fills don't have to be super loud, or if you're in a giant environment and the side fills can be really loud and it doesn't matter that much, those can be an option for you. One of the pros of this setup is that you only need a couple of speakers to cover a large area. Some of the cons are that you get a lot of stage noise and the potential for feedback is there, especially if somebody takes a handheld vocal microphone and walks close to one of these side fills where the mic is turned up. Additionally, it only takes one or two outputs from the console. So if you're short on gear, this can work for you. The next type of setup are monitor wedges, where we take the same kinds of speakers that we would use in side fills and we place them on the ground facing up at the performer. Because each speaker is closer to the performer, we don't have to turn it up as much, meaning that the stage noise could potentially be lower. However, with many monitors on stage, and if you're competing again with drums or guitar amps, this can actually make it much worse. So it's a trade-off. You get a little bit more customization. People can get individual changes to their mixes if you have the right number of aux sends on your monitor console to send it to them. Because we have speakers pointed at microphones, we have to be careful about the microphone's polar pattern or the direction with which it picks up sound so that we can get it turned up more in the monitor without it feeding back and starting to squeal. The best case scenario for this is to have a dedicated monitor console with a monitor engineer so that they can take care to listen to each person's mix as they want changes so that they can hear what they need to hear in order to perform, play, and sing well. Having a separate monitor console also allows you to have a separate signal path so the EQ and compression changes at front of house aren't affecting the monitors at all. Of course, with that type of setup, it's really helpful to have another person that's qualified to run the monitors so that they can make the changes and not mess stuff up and make it worse with feedback. One pro tip when you're running monitors is to make the sound of the monitor wedges a little bit thinner. This way, the low mids coming off stage aren't cluttering up the first few rows with your front of house mix. Next up are in-ear monitors, and these provide a lot of benefits and can be tricky to overcome getting into them, but we'll talk about more of that in just a minute. In-ear monitors give each person a customizable mix and it keeps the stage noise very low. It also greatly reduces the chances for feedback. Some of the cons though are that if you have a musician and they're listening to their in-ear monitors, if you don't have a way to monitor what they're hearing, they could have a totally messed up mix, be totally isolated and not hear what they need to hear, and nobody knows it but them. One of my audio pro friends set up a monitor mixing system at a church, and somehow one of the in-ear monitor packs had its gain turned down by like 48 decibels. What this means is even if you cranked a signal going to those in-ear monitors, nobody would be hearing any Thing on the other end, and it might be maybe a whisper, but still very, very quiet. The thing is, this particular singer that used that pack every single week didn't tell anybody. She just was kind of confused as to why things weren't working well. So finally, when they discovered that she wasn't getting any audio, it had been almost a year. Now, who knows when that thing got turned down and by whom, but it goes to show that unless you test out everybody's packs every time, you're not exactly sure what they're hearing. Another thing is that sometimes musicians might be actually damaging their hearing 
hearing by running it too loud. If you had a monitor wedge on the ground and you're listening to it and it's very loud, everybody else is gonna say, huh, that's really loud and it's actually bugging me, so we should turn it down. Within your monitors, if they crank it up really loud, they can damage their hearing and nobody knows it but me. <sighs> Sorry, I'll keep the singing to myself next time, but that's what happens when you have musical Tourette's. Mixing in-ear monitors requires a little bit more skill because you can't just hear the reflections off the back wall of the church or hear somebody else's guitar amp or something nearby. They isolate the sound so that you can protect your hearing from loud sounds around you, but again, you have to turn it up not too loud in order to keep protecting your hearing. Three things your musicians need to know when starting with in-ear monitors. They need to know what they need. They need to know how to operate the mixer or the thing that's sending them the monitor mix, even if that's calling out, hey, can I get something a little bit different in my monitors? And they need to know how to fix something and adapt when something is totally terrible. Sometimes this just means asking for help and saying, hey, sound guy, can you help me with this? This sounds really weird. Another potential drawback is that in-ear monitors need more equipment. For in-ear monitors, stereo is way better than mono for a lot of reasons, but being able to pan things around the stereo spectrum means that you can identify things more easily without getting the level up. The drawback then is that stereo requires more aux sends or different equipment to help get a stereo signal to those in-ear monitors. Whether wireless or wired, you typically have two ways that will get the signal or the mix to your in-ear monitors. There's a personal monitor mixer, which essentially is a little sub mixer that gives people the channels that they need to turn up and down, or it can be run off an aux send or a mix from the soundboard. If you're wanting to go wireless and a very clean stage look is really important to you, you'll need the transmitters and receivers, you'll need a bunch of batteries and rechargeables are better in the long run. You'll also need the in-ear monitors themselves and all the aux sends on the board getting to the transmitter. Another great thing to do is to add a remote control system so that people can mix the monitors from their iPad or their phone so that they can connect to the board and make changes on their own. Oh, another thing you might need to add to the list of things you need are antennas and an antenna combiner if you've got a bunch of different wireless units. If you're wanting to go wired from the soundboard, you'll need to have some sort of headphone amplifier that the musician or singer can plug their in-ears into. If you're looking for those, I'll put a link to some of them down in the description below. Or there's this one from Coda Music Technologies. It has a couple XLRs that come in the backside. It's got a volume knob and a balance knob. It runs off a nine volt battery, or if you're a guitar player, and you've got a pedal board power supply, you can power it off of nine volt, 100 amp center negative power supply cable. So if you're an electric guitar player and you've got that available on your pedal board, you could try that as well. This one will do mono or stereo mode. And stereo mode is just that, the left side is the left, the right side is the right, and you would mix that coming from the console. Another way you could set it up is to run it in mono and then adjust the balance between a mono mix of everything else and then a mono input of just your signal. So if you had your microphone going into one side and a basic mix going to the other side, you could balance between more mix and more me and not have to flag down the audio engineer all the time when you need something a little bit different. I did have the idea that you could use a mic splitter and send the signal to the soundboard and loop it back to the input right here, but it doesn't have quite enough juice to get enough level from an unamplified microphone to be able to balance that mix really well. I tried it with a passive bass, I tried it with a dynamic microphone, neither of them functioned especially well. So even if you have that idea, it might not go so great. So those are three main ways that you can get your monitor system set up. If you're having trouble with feedback or you're setting up in your monitors and having some trouble, I've got a couple playlists linked down in the description below that can help you walk through some of those challenges and their solutions. If you wanna see more great content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you liked this video, go ahead and mash that thumbs up. As always, remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.